My name is Dor Shalev. I work for Smart Defense Research Center in Israel. Sorry for my bad English. I need to translate everything twice. So I'll be hoping that you will understand me and the slide will be good and the demo will went well. Okay, let's let's start. So we are talking about, uh, today we'll talk about, we'll do some kind of small introduction. We'll talk about trust, technology, and new privacy issues raised by technology. We'll chat a little bit about overview about home networking and privacy. I will give you the steps to make a crazy toaster, like I did here. We'll do a small demonstration. I hope it will not uh, crash, because it's like a live network. So this is like very dangerous network to go. So if it won't uh, work, you have to forgive me. It's work this morning. I will chat a little bit about side effect of this research, of this research like uh, Windows SSDP distributed denial of service. Uh, we'll not show zero days of stuff here, but I will try to make a small demonstration of the uh, denial of service. And we'll talk about some to do, some extend ideas about the home networking and about cool devices. After that, we'll give some respect to the people that helped me. And uh, I went uh, on their own way. And then we'll uh, leave some time for a Q&A. OK, from the beginning, it's dangerous. So. I stole those pictures from guys called hackthetoaster.com. They have very cool ideas over there, and it can be dangerous. So the mission of this research was to make like world domination via single UDP packet. This uh, mission was failed. OK, so I heard some guy from Google, some smart guy from Google talked about uh, a trust and about privacy, and about do we care, about all kinds of stuff with technology. And he said that, uh, do we care if our home devices will see us naked? You know, you wake up in the morning, go uh, grab a coffee or something, and you're naked on the way to, to the kitchen, and do you care or not? So I think that we need to be care. I think that home devices, uh, can uh, uh, turn against us and spy on our network. I think that privacy and trash issues raised by new technologies and new hardware and cool devices. If we look about some devices that support the SSDP and, and uh, UPnP, we can uh, check like uh, cell phones, like Nokia phones. We have some cool devices like clocks, uh, radio, internet radio, Windows Media Player 11, Xbox and some uh, DVDs and uh, uh, cool stuff. So this uh, cool stuff raises like new uh, uh, tricks and new uh, issues, and I want to chat about them today. So uh, common privacy issues. Technology is about to replace the trust model we use today. People get confused between people that know things and machines that know things. Do we care if Google machines know that we would like to pay for porn? Does this information can be given to a human? Usually we don't trust human to deal with this information. Should we trust corporate? Should we trust hardware vendors and software vendors? Home devices in XP and Windows Vista have some kind of new component. You can see in the lower button, the lower side of the screen, you can see some kind of uh, way of icon that uh, when we use devices uh, that is uh, internet enabled, uh, the, the Windows box and the Vista box have support for those uh, devices. We'll chat or we'll not chat about peer-to-peer -peer networking but this is part of the uh, home networking in Vista. And there is like network appliances and wireless devices. The UPnP architecture, it's very cool architecture. We'll uh, mention a little bit about it. We'll do some kind of overview of distributed uh, UPnP architecture based on TCP, UDP, and HTTP. We'll not mention the IPv6 vector that reintroduced like old exploits that were already fixed in IPv4. 
uh, like land attack last year. And we will uh, talk about uh, security exploit and early threats in those protocols and we'll give uh, respect to the people that found them. In uh, New Vista, there is a better uh, support for device discovery. So you can see that uh, devices and software can be easily uh, uh, discovered. Those uh, protocols behind it's NetBIOS, UPnP, SSDP, and some other protocol that don't really know about it. Okay, in Vista, there is the peer-to-peer -peer networking, people near me uh, feature, network discovery, and media sharing. So if you can see in my slides over there, I just uh, mentioned, the, I will just show the a network discovery and the media sharing feature in Vista. And if we are talking about device scenario, we are talking about smart home, about uh, computers all over in kitchen, living room, master bedroom, garage, or I don't know where. When we look on the new Vista interface, we have some kind under the network neighborhood or the network uh, discovery, we have like a place for the own the uh, computer that we use. You can see it on the lower left corner. We have some media sharing feature. It's the second one from the left. And we have uh, uh, some fake devices that we can add, like the remote UI client the crazy toaster and the fake Intel access point. So this is the presentation page and this is the uh, when someone wrote his device description, he can choose whatever he like to put inside over there. When we are talking about home networking, each one of those devices, it can be a, a own PC in the LAN, it can be a web page with a virus, it can be a media center, VoIP devices, wireless access points, cell phones, any appliance or crazy toaster like I did here today. So each one of them can be owned and can be a target to hackers inside our uh, local network. We'll use wireless connectivity to advise ourselves and show our stuff over there. When we are talking about the UPnP architecture, we are talking about very cool uh, architecture. It was like made like by a couple of vendors. Microsoft was one of them, not the leader one. But it's internet-based technology. It's built on TCP/IP, UDP, HTTP, XML, and other technologies as well. The UPnP support in uh, XP is divided into two parts. Uh, the SSDP, the Simple Search uh, Discovery Protocol, is a, a service that is uh, default enabled. And the UPnP that uh, show the presentation and talk with the devices is, uh, is not uh, enabled by default. So we have a listening port in port a 180, 1,000, 2,000, I will show you by written later. So we have a support for internet gateway device discovery and we have support for a couple of components inside but not all of the uh, picture is, is still ready. That was changed on Vista. On XP installation, we can uh, find our device under, uh, we can install it under the uh, network services. We have a, a default support for internet gateway devices. If, if you can uh, look on the graph over there, we have a four step, um, four steps uh, when we do our, um, when we add our device to the network, we have four steps, the device join the network, advertise his presence by doing a multicast. The control point, so the control point in our point is the XP system. He asks for device, for device description. It's an XML-based uh, technology. 
the device gets the service description that the device is supporting, and then the computer, the control point, invoke methods and start to uh, control the device itself. Some early threads that was uh, found in the SSDP and UPnP stuff, part of them was uh, found in the XP boxes, like the previous one, the first one. Uh, part of them was found in the device itself. Lots of research made by uh, EI. They are very cool guys. They did lots of uh, crazy stuff in lots, lots of protocols, so they have get the respects over there. We see uh, vulnerabilities in uh, devices, like appliances, routers, and stuff. Part of the, uh, the exploits were buffer overflows. Part of them was uh, some logical bugs that allow opening ports and get username and password of uh, ADSL stuff. And part of them was a DCRPC. The major one was DCRPC, uh, found by iDefense and a couple of more people. Uh, it was a DCRPC interface for the UPnP, and it, was, it wasn't like broadcasting stuff, but it's the same stuff. The last one was found by uh, Michael Lane. It wasn't on the uh, Microsoft, it was on the OS uh, Bonjour. So it's very similar to SSDP and UPnP, but it's work over DNS. But it's same, same stuff over there, and it's do the same. So, let's talk about steps to create a crazy toaster Trojan. When we started this research, this research we looked for open uh, services in, in XP. And we found the SSDP and the UPnP that is uh, related to the SSDP. And we realized that not only routers, media players and servers and other cool stuff can connect to the networks, but also that can be used for the attackers. A scenario of crazy toaster, a Trojan device, or a software with TCP IP capabilities, like router, media players, access point, that join to the local network is, uh, is possible, and it starts to make like hacking inside the, uh, the local LAN. If you look in the, in the picture over here, we can see how I can present my stuff in the, my uh, network places. And when the user uh, goes and do a right click and properties on this icon, he can see like uh, I can write whatever I want. Like I can uh, put myself as a, a fake Intel access point. I can, there is no really a SSL a certificate or any uh, something that will verify my true ideas. So steps to create a crazy toaster. What you need to build your own toaster, uh, indeed needed ingredients. So you need a toaster. Okay, you don't have to, but you need a toaster. You need a hardware. You can use any hardware or none. You need a software. I choose, because I'm very lazy, I choose a, a, a stack vendor sample from Intel. There are a couple of them, but I was very lazy. I took the Intel one. It's cross-platform, it's very cool, and you just need to take it, compile it, and run your stuff. Also, you need network access to victim network. It can be a warm victim. We will use multicast to broadcast our uh, present inside the network. And we will use some uh, social engineering and physical or physical access. So I can be part of the network, or I can just take my toaster and put it near the window of the, of the guy, not, not even inside the home, and just uh, use the wireless network. The Intel SSDP and UPnP stuff, uh, SDK, is very cool. They have three layers. There is the client or service application. This is the application that I wrote. In this case, I just put some kind some uh, of browser exploits over there and I put it inside the web server and I did the uh, forwarding to a third party website and uh, run my code from there. We have the, S the SDK layer from Intel that give us the web server, the HTTP, SSDP support, uh, Gene, SOAP and XML parsers over there so they give us everything we need. 
to run our stuff, but we also need some kind of TCP uh, stack uh, give by the operating system. Some problems of this cool project. So we had the heat problem. Okay, if someone is turn off the toaster, the computer or the hardware inside can melt. We were, I wasn't able to uh, solve this problem, the heat problem. We had some Linux to Nokia IPSO porting issues. So I wanted to bring like a cool software or cool hardware to plug into the toaster and I had to rewrite everything, like every the TCP, I, uh, TCP IP stuff, like socket stuff, to uh, run on the cool uh, Nokia uh, IPSO. We use, in Checkpoint, we use the Nokia IPSO to run our firewall over there. So um, they didn't like the idea that I would like to present a Trojan on the same hardware, but it was a cool one. And last one, we had the shipping problem. How can I bring my toaster with all those stuff here? I can, how can I go via custom? I, wanted, I didn't want to go to Guantanamo Bay instead of uh, come to Las Vegas. So we had to FedEx everything. <laughs> okay, our crazy toaster will advertising present on victim local network. We will use the discovery process that you will use, you will use HTTPU, it's HTTP over UDP. We will do UDP multicast to all of the networks, so I don't really need to know about my victim's uh, network. The multicast is to this strange address, because I'm very nervous, I can't really pronounce all the numbers over there, but it's go to, to this port that is already uh, listening in XP and on Vista. We'll send a couple of packets, multi multiple uh, uh, multicast packets over UDP. We'll do some social engineering. We declare ourselves as some uh, standard computing equipment or kitchen appliance, and we can choose whatever we like to do. And then we'll wait for the victim, for, for, for the LAN user to come and click our icon under the network neighborhood uh, place. The presentation web server, I had lots of uh, thinking. What should I present? Should I try to steal his Gmail contacts? Should I read his local, uh, oh, I'm talking about the victim. Should I read his uh, inbox? Should I uh, write a Trojan? Should I do like, uh, I don't know, read stuff, kill stuff? And I decided to go and use some uh, known techniques and experts from the wild. It's the MPAC. MPAC toolkit. It was like uh, one month before uh, uh, on the news. They, it, the tool was uh, written by uh, Russian people, PHP scripts, very easy one. It's like a toolkit to allow uh, people to install their own Trojan using a, a patch vulnerabilities. I came from, I come from Israel. Okay, we are single CD country. We have one XP installation in all Israel. So not all of us get uh, patches. And, um, <laughs> and the toaster, uh, the uh, MPAC, the toaster will use just for pipe to uh, bring traffic from third party website. We'll retrieve the attack payload from the remote host and then we'll run it from the local LAN. Okay, you can see some stuff that was uh, needed to this uh, crazy toaster. So I bought like a 15 bucks uh, toaster oven. I took the Nokia hardware on the left, but I didn't use it after all the porting stuff. I took like a regular Pentium 3 PC and I plug it over here. Also, you need bread. In this demonstration, I will run the crazy toaster. We'll do the discovery process. We'll do the presentation. We'll do the social engineering, and I will show you the browser exploits. If we will have time, and I think that we will have time because I'm running. If we will have time, I will uh, open the uh, source code of the uh, JavaScript attack 
This is a multi-platform attack that use uh, known techniques. When uh, someone come to the website, the, the site uh, gave him, uh, uh, sent him to the right page to run his code over there. We'll not use the Ipso hardware, and we will use the, I use the uh, Windows SDK to, to run everything. I do it on a live network, so I hope it will run. Okay, when I plug my toaster to the network, I can see here the local toaster. And when I first time plug my uh, toaster to the network, I see some kind of notification over here. Because I tested like 2,000 times before, we will not see this notification, but it's in the first time that you are there, it's pumping over there. So we'll ask our user to click on it. It's inside the LAN. And now we will forward the traffic to outside, to, our, to my web server. This is the MPAC. So now the MPAC is running. I put some alerts inside to, to show the process over there. But we will try to download a Trojan, the same Trojan that I use in the toaster, and try to distribute it inside the network. So now, after the, I had some kind of uh, browser identification, so uh, this web server sent me to the right location. This is an un unpatched machine, so all the exploits uh, works over there. What, are, what we'll now try to do, the bug that was uh, really made hold the mess of the impact was the bug that was found by Finjan. It was very logical bug. I heard lots of talks in DEF CON and in Black Hat about a heap spraying. Heap spraying become a huge problem. But this bug was some kind of logical bug. So in this point, my Trojan was downloaded and was run. If that exploit uh, were failed, uh, the toolkit try lots of other exploits and try to run uh, until he get hit the, the box. Okay, so after I ran my toaster and I infected the network, I got like uh, spread the toaster from other uh, places as well. So if you have one box that is unpatched in your system, it's enough for us because we will download uh, our uh, payload, our Trojan, and run it. I would like to show you a little bit more about the MPAC. The MPAC was sold for a little bit less than 1K, and they promised to give like some updates to people that buy it. It's a uh, PHP based, so you have statistics of how many exploits and how many traffics, what was the exploit that was used, and which OS they are running at. So it's help you like uh, inject stuff with malicious website. The MPAC was a uh, quite a uh, big hit, not because the MPAC was a big hit, not because the bugs that was used over there, but because uh, they had compromised lots of sharing shared hosting facilities with some stupid cPanel local exploit. So 
if they had like a zero day, they uh, infected more than 10K of hosting, a shared hosting site. So if they had like a zero day, they can uh, took over the internet. So a side effect of this research, of this research was uh, some uh, way that the SSDP uh, protocol, the simple uh, search discovery protocol, we made like a distributed denial of service. It was a, a little bit uh, strange because we were able to kill all the uh, pieces on the local LAN, which wasn't a remote code execution, but we sent like a malformed or well-formatted XML uh, document. So it wasn't, uh, we had some kind of recursion over there that uh, sent all the computers in the LAN to, to go to 100% uh, CPU. So we're talking about recursive logic bomb. We had some memory consumption, virtual page, virtual, virtual memory page uh, went crazy. So it took the computers a couple of hours to uh, go out from this 100 CPU um, effect. Sorry, I had some sh short uh, flashback. Too much LSD in the 90s. So. Okay, do you have a very cool distributed damage and possible attack vectors for that? But a, a remote attacker must be inside the local uh, LAN segment to do it. it. It can do it by a Trojan, it can do it by, by Worm or by other stuff. MS promised to fix it on service pack 3 for XP. So, I will not show you the exploit, but I will show you all the other stuff. You can make the XML very easily. You don't need to do to me to show you how to do it. It's like a known bad XML that you use for Explorer as well. But we'll do a notify. Notify it's like get and post, but just for SSDP. So we'll advertise our present. We'll send it to the specific multicast address. So we don't need to know about how the LAN is look at. We will uh, give a URL, so we'll have to have a web server that will uh, uh, give it back the uh, XML, the malicious XML. And we'll give a respect to EI for doing lots of research in this field. So if we talked about four steps of the discovery process, we are going to kill the system on the third one. Advertising is the same. The second page, the second stage is the control point ask for a device description and the device bring like a very crazy or very recursive XML file with description that make everything go nuts. Okay, so we'll try to make a small demonstration about uh, how we make the smart home become a crazy home. And I will try to, to show you the logic bomb discovery. on its way. <laughs> this is the exploit, it's peril based. This is the notify packet you are planning to send. This is port number. Uh, 
and this is the broadcast. Okay, now we can see the other victim is 100% CPU. It was very fun to do it in checkpoint uh, production land because we have like 200 pieces and I was able to kill or don't allow them to work anymore so I ask the forgiveness after that. <laughs> I, do, I do it like 2,000 or 4,000 times, but this is the reason they asked to kick me out of the network after. Okay, some extended idea that can be do in those fields. I had, when I started to look into uh, home devices, I had like lots of ideas and I talked with people and uh, they described and, uh, uh, and gave us lots of ideas. So you can do ARP spoofing, ARP poisoning, so you can, the toaster can read all the uh, uh, traffic inside the local network. You can use kernel bugs like uh, wireless uh, drivers bugs to run your code if the, the network have a very bad um, very bad uh, drivers installed. There is lots to do in wireless hacking, web cracking. I play a little bit with MIPS and Linux embedded systems. Uh, it's become very, very cheap. You know, in Israel, uh, when you buy a six pack of Coke, you get like a free DVD. So I think that in the future we'll see lots of embedded systems, very cheap one, and it can be a problem. Cell phone hacking like Nokia, phones, GPS. Attacker can use the GPS uh, uh, things over there and know stuff about privacy and location. And IP phone, I guess they will see lots of IP phones exploits very, very soon because I see that lots of you have IP phones. Uh, iPhone, not IP phone, iPhone, like uh, Apple stuff. It will be very easy to exploit them. Media centers can be a very good uh, target. Game console, so we can use the game console to send our stuff and try to get more uh, victims. I had some thinking about DVX Worm to make like a movie that when uh, you uh, steal movies like all of us is doing via peer-to-peer, you will get uh, some kind of copyright bomb that will whip all your movies or something like this. And we can also think about physical security. Maybe uh, put a microphone inside and a, a webcam or something and just broadcast from the toaster outside to the, to the world. Also IPv6 will give us all the refrigerators and all the uh, home equipment will be IPv6, so I guess there are lots of work to do over there. Conclusion. I am running. Conclusion. Cheap hardware appliance open door for the bad guys. I told you before about the, when you buy the Coke, you get a, a free DVD in Israel, but I think that it will come very, very uh, common uh, to do like embedded uh, software, embedded hardware, and give it for free and stuff. Wireless ha hardware at IPv6 open new ball game, like reintroduce stuff that already fixed uh, years before. I think that you trust no one. Hardware and software vendors and free gifts, so even if you have a very cool device, you don't really need to trust him. Home devices can be target for remote attackers as well, and not just from uh, places inside the LAN. That can be buffer overflows, that can be cross-site request fergy or XSS, like we've seen in the Jeremiah talk uh, a couple of times. The SSDP service and the UPnP on XP must be disabled. This is my conclusion. And in Vista, you need to disable the network discovery protocol. 
So, can home devices stand against us? I think they, they can. Home devices are as bad as the software authors. So, if you are a badass and you write hardware and software, you will be, you will make a badass home devices. I would like to give some respect to the people and the places that I st uh, stole some information from them and learn about them. So the UPnP forum, uh, it's a very cool site that have like lots of descriptions and links for everything that is connected to UPnP. I would like to give some respect to the hackthetoaster.com. The guys did like the opposite side. They took PC and, and put inside a toaster or screen, so they went for the other side, but they are very cool. In the beginning, when I started this toaster work, I thought I'm so cool and I'm the first one is doing this, but I've seen that it is very old idea of a mad toaster or toaster that do stuff, so I wanted to give some respect to the people that did this. I would like to give another respect for AI guys. Uh, for the SSDP and the UPnP stuff and for the other stuff that they did on the security research arena. I would like to uh, give you a link of a, a project Cowbird that I heard about it in a uh, last uh, Black Hat uh, made by a friend of mine, Jonathan, a new friend that I met a couple of days before. He talked about how to make, uh, how to take a very cheap hardware like a Linksys uh, Media Center and uh, 30 minutes and 30 networks, so we replace the OS inside and give like uh, make it a wireless scanner. So it was very cool idea. There is the exploiting embedded systems made by Barnaby Jack or whatever, he's a cool guy. So he, he showed how to make a shell code on an ARM. A, a shell code on ARM a process, not a Intel based. I want a, to have links to the UPnP stack vendors like Intel, Cyberlink, and a Siemens. There is the OSGI Alliance. They are making the software for the future smart home. So it's very cool stuff. And on DEF CON 9, some dude called Dog showed a very cool way to do a talking toaster. So you need to go and look his work he did over there. Another website, it's UPnP Hacks. That is, was a very uh, nice one. Okay, so the slides and the toaster source code are in my website. You, are, um, you can call, go over there and download stuff. You can contact me. Send me an email, questions, everything. If you would like to play together, cool stuff, I'm ready. Any questions? Thank you. Excuse me? Maybe next year. We are open for, for new ideas. Thank you for your time.